nice pearls, huh? But the, it was repainted after a few times because of course. Uh, it wasn't so nice. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> after uh, one it Russian artist know. did. A Russian. After he he did after, so it was uh, like because, because it wasn't so good. This uh, Radegovin, no. Radegovin in no no Albert Road. No, this in is Calcutta. No, this is no, no. Detroit. I think. Do you know? Uh, maybe London. I no. think it's from Detroit. That's <laughs> Detroit, right? Who said? <laughs> maybe. <coughs> but. <coughs> I don't know, so I'm not going to. I don't remember a safe. The safe, Prakupade. What does Janani was? Yes, he said uh, it's Prakupade safe. He was using for for documents, for correspondence. Who is this? It's also from. Is this open? No, no, no. no. You have the key. Only Who one has key. Janani was Prabhu or Madhavakari Prabhu has. Huh? Madhavakari Prabhu, I think he has. Who's that? Uh, Ujjari department leader. Oh, that big. Uh, so, have you ever looked inside? Yes, Janios Prabhu sometimes comes and show us. Something. What's inside? Robot clothes. Sorry, Is it? Yeah, because we he don't... He kept his clothes in here. Yeah. But so yes. why are they in here? Because here now they keep things which is which they using for service. For cleaning? For cleaning, for Prabhupada, change dress, for multi. Oh. Let's go there. Yeah. Can mm -hmm. no, no. touch this? Mm, no. Is there a? Uh, he said Pushkar. Push. I was just going to say, is Pushkar's name there? Do you see it? Anyway, yeah. There's nothing to say. You know, there it is. Mm -hmm. This but was this done one, in, because you, in you Indonesia. This was done in Indonesia. They're famous for this. Bali, in Bali, the island of Bali. And Prabhupada liked it. He said, hang it there. That's all I can tell you. It wasn't so nice and clean, though. And this is maybe Pushkar again, or Pandu, some... This is the Sahajiya, damn it. <laughs> but, see, paintings, they don't do well in Mayapur. No, because so many years it goes... Uh, no, but especially in Mayapur, it's damp and hot and moist and... It always goes like this. You get some kind of... Anyway, yes, yes. there's not very much to comment on. Of course, all of this was not there. It was used for Prabhupada. Yeah, but I, I'm saying yes, it, it, it was wasn't stacked up there. Huh? I just translate. Yeah. Please sit down. Oh. Yes, please <laughs> Do you think it's very cold here? So then? He's dressed for Moscow. <laughs> Take off his hat. Take his hat off. Uh, here there used to be a big painting. It wasn't a very well done painting, but it was a painting taken from a photograph of the first Pondal in 1972, which was up front. None of this was here, of course. And it was pro it was the photograph was Prabhupada doing initiation. And his, some of his godbrothers were there, and Brahmananda, Maharaj, and a few others. 
So someone did a painting from that. It wasn't a nice painting, but Providence had put it up there, so it filled the whole thing. But then it got bad like this. And then someone ripped it. So then when Prabhupada came one, one year, I forget which year, I said, oh, I said, oh it deteriorated Prabhupada. He said, make shelves and put my books on. And uh, we're very peaceful here. And there used to be these lights, it was just a like on the fan, you know, it was just a rod with a light bulb. It wasn't so and uh, at a certain time of the year, uh, before just before when it first rains and it's hot. Then these little teeny bugs come out and they fly all around the, any light they see, they just, so many. And I came in here one evening and Prabhupada was sitting back and he was looking at all the hundreds of, if not thousands of little. He said, it's very interesting. I said, what problem? He said, each plane, he said, each plane has a pilot. And they're flying so fast around the bulb. And they never crash into each other. Pilot. And he said, this is their life. They come out when the sun goes down. They fly around like crazy. And in the morning, you sweep them up the road again. Ugly. No, I hate the ugly. Why do they have that anyway? Then one day, can you turn that on? I was down where the kitchen used to be, where it is now, the yeah, kitchen on the next floor. And I heard something in the kitchen, it was, it was late, it was like 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. And I heard some, something in the kitchen, I looked at the window and Prabhupada was going, whatever was stored on some shelves. So I went in, I asked Prabhupada, is there something I can do for you? And he looked at me and said, no lemon pickle? You have lemon pickle? He wanted the lemon pickle. Not not the lemon pickle in oil, but the lemon pickle that's just soaked in salt water and then it... Yeah. I said, no problem, problem, we don't have any lemon pickle. And he said, oh. He was disappointed. He said, lemon pickle is good if you want to activate your appetite. You have lemon pickle and then you can eat and digest properly. So he went back to his room. And I, I found the Chutananda Swami. 
You know anyone around here? Of course, here, in, in this building, this was it. There's nothing. There's just nothing here. There were no trees, no trees along the road, no palm trees, no coconut trees. No other building. We're just out in the middle of the rice fields. And between here and the joke pit, there's nothing. No, this building in the middle of a, you know, and all the long bodies about the road. It was just the road, no trees. So I asked him, do you know anyone around who might have lemon pickles? Maybe a, one of them. <laughs> he said, I do. We have a like member we made. Far, far away. Up north. And we had an old jeep. I said, come on, let's go to that man's house and ask him if he has lemon pickles. So we drove it. Jesus, it was about an hour's drive along that main road, way, way far away. We get to the guy's house. So we knock on the door. Very nice man. He said, do you have lemon pickles? Guru Maharaj wants some lemon pickles. So he said, yes, for Guru Maharaj. So he gave us a, a bowl of lemon pickle. And we drove all the way back. And it must have been 12.30. And I put it in a bowl. About that big. Filled it with lemon pickle. And probably I was sitting here. His eyes got And he took it from me and he sat there and he ate the entire bowl of lemon pickle. The entire bowl. Have you ever had lemon pickle? Very salty. I mean, it's delicious. I love lemon pickle. But he ate the whole one piece of lemon pickle was enough. He ate the whole, whole bowl. Another time, we heard something. It was nighttime. Downstairs on the next floor, the first floor, under the stairs was open. And see, I heard some noise from under that stairs. Right? And it's probably Hiding under the stairs. Said, I'm checking on your security to see if they know if they can find me. No, So it was the the mood was very familial. It was very home, and the inter the relate the interaction between us and Prabhupada was very fatherly, grandfatherly, and very relaxed. I I can just. I don't know about all of these things, I don't remember, but I can tell you that more stories. You want more stories? So again, in this room, Prabhupada would take his walk uh, walk up the road. I don't think we had a paved road, but go up where the 
Bajan Kutir is and he turned left and walked down where all the shops are. And Prabhupada was saying, you know, build this and then I want you to do this. And I kept saying, where's the money? Finally, I, I asked it once too much. <laughs> Why you are always worried? You do not think Krishna has the money to pay for his project? <laughs> Then later, in the morning, I get a Shruti Kirti or someone that whoever is serving us, Prabhupada wants to see you. So I go running down because I was staying up in the room. Uh, I was sharing a room, one of those with, with uh, Jai Pataka and Sutanaka. So I come running down. I'm happy because I'm not going to see you. I have my Dandavats right there. And I get up and I have a big smile on my face. And uh, Tamal Krishna and Garga Muni Maharaj, they're sitting there. And I, sta oh, I pay my dandavats, I stand up, and smile, and Prabhupada looks at me, and then he says to them, our Bhavananda is a real Vaishnava. He is joyful at every moment. And I said, only because I'm in your presence, Prabhupada. I said, all right, sit down. So I sat down here. And then he looked at Tamal and Gargamuni and he said, our, because he always called me usually our Bhavanam. Possessing, possessing me, which is fine by me. Our Bhavananda is always worried about money. <laughs> He said, actually, collecting money, that's very easy. And he went like that. He said, it's flying through the air. You just have to reach out and grab it. But spending money for Krishna, that is very difficult. And he, pointing at me, is very expert at that. So I want you to, to make sure that he always has enough money to spend for Krishna. I was so happy. <laughs> I think it was a year, maybe two years, like 1976. I asked Gargamuni. I said, I want to build a park for Prabhupada. There was a, a, a boy, <coughs> god brother from America named Kanva. He was a gardener. Very expert. So I said, but well, we need money. Gargamuni immediately gave me money. And this park here is what we made. It was a rice field. We filled it in, we filled the dirt in, we made the lawn, we made the flower beds, we built the benches. And at that end, those two big trees, those were the first trees in my I planted them in 1976. And there are, of course, Kadamba trees. Have you ever been here when it's planted? In Vrindavan, they have the small Kadamba. But these, these trees are big. Perfect. 
perfect kadam. And the reason we planted them, they're all, all over because they grow very fast. They shoot right up. So those are the first trees. And uh, in 1977, Prabhupada would come down in the afternoon and sit on that bench in the middle of the far side, which we're going to, we're going to build up like a little thing over it. So that and he had darshan. He had all the green grass and problems. He was sitting there one, one late afternoon. He said, Bhavananda has built me a gentleman's park. And it was the only piece of landscaped land in the whole of Monaco. And behind the, the flower bed were all the dahlias. You know, now we're coming into winter is flower season. The marigolds, the sturgeons, the petunias, the dahlias. You know big dahlias. You know dahlias? Very colorful, big flowers. Anyway, so that was nice. Then he looked up towards the front road. Why they are not coming? No one came to my room, really, pretty much. No one. Why they are not coming? Why they are not coming? So I don't know if you were here last weekend was the Bosnia, what was that called? Uh, huh? uh, uh, hundreds of, <laughs> it seemed like a hundred thousand people. Rivers of people. But they're not just people. They're devotees. Sometimes Western devotees. Of course, you're Russian, you're not Eastern, you're not Western. <laughs> It's always been your pro identity problem. <laughs> are you European or are you Asian? Right? <laughs> because my grandparents are from Lithuania, so we, I understand Lithuania. My grandmother made really, really nice stuffed candles. She called it Golumpi. Golumpi, is it? Oh. But in Lithuania we did. I guess in Lithuania. Golumpi. My favorite food. And latka. Potato pancake. And cartoons. My grandmother, she'd be grading the <laughs> She had 17 children. <laughs> so she was used to making <laughs> and, and when my father, when I brought him some prashad, <laughs> paneer, he said, oh, he said, when I was a boy, uh, because my grandmother had a big six thing wood stove. Because they lived on a farm in, in America. She would make paneer, which was called in America farmer's cheese. And she would hang the cheesecloth full of paneer on the stove. And any of the children could come in any time break off a piece of bread and a hunk of paneer. <laughs> anyway, I got hurt. Just to let you know, maybe we have the same genes. <laughs> so, flowers. We built the first flower garden. 
Мы построили первый цветочный сад. On the end of, of the Bajan Kutir, it wasn't called the Bajan Kutir, it was, was just a straw house. In 1972, that's all we had, that's where we stayed with Prabhupada. So at the end, we built a rose garden. Uh, we built a, a wall, we filled it all in with dirt and planted, I think, a hundred rose bushes. And that was very exciting for me. Some of my godmothers, you know, we were rough and tough. It was a uh, festival time. But then no one had arrived yet. Of course, festivals weren't so big then. But I had a big red rose that I was bringing down to Prabhupada. And as I passed this little, uh, a couple of the sannyasis had built a little a one room bamboo, it's called Chetai. Woven bamboo walls. It was just a uh, But they were staying there for the festival. And as I passed them, I heard one of them. What has he done? What's he done? He's planted a couple of rose bushes. They were, you know, criticizing me. <laughs> so, yeah, it didn't bother me so much. But it, yeah, it annoyed me, but it didn't. So I continued down, and Prabhupada was standing on this veranda, but at that end. I brought him the rose, a wonderful rose, and I handed it to him. And I saw those thorn on it. I forgot to take that thorn off. Well, if I held it in his hand, like, like, like that. Yeah. He said, Krishna's creation. So beautiful. And I went to take the rose. Not to take it, but to... Prabhupada said, what? What is that? I said, Prabhupada, there's a thorn there. I Prabhupada said, no, no. All of Krishna's creation is beautiful, including the thorn. Then he looked around at the rice fields. And he said, this is just in my brain, I you know, many things. He said, the symptom of your success will be when everywhere I look, I see flowers. So I felt really good. I wanted to go back and think. <laughs> There were very many nice things with Prabhupada in my And so simple. But we never thought to, you know, make a nicer bed. It just never occurred to us. You know, simple desk. I don't know what we were thinking. I mean, I don't know who your gurus are, but you can be sure that this would not be, right? You wouldn't let them sleep on that bed or... Now everything is opulence. But the opulence was probable. So it's a different thing. He himself was the center of all opulence because he's... He is connected, was and is connected to the supreme opulent. He was nice. 
It's just so nice. Anyway, there you have it. That's some of my stories. I won't tell you all because then you'll kick me out. <laughs> you have any questions? Story. There's a drawer there. Is there a drawer there on that side? Yes. I was sitting here with Hansa Duda. How about opening the drawer? Took out a gold ring. With a black stone. He do you want this? And you put it on. We both dove. <laughs> and I grabbed it. I wish, many years later, I wish I had said, Prabhupada, I have no need for a gold ring. I'd rather have your association. But I didn't. Of course, in the last year of Prabhupada's stay in this world, I was his body servant. So I had so much association. And I would massage him, I would bathe him, I would dry him, dress him. It was, it was like a deity. I had that very, very, for some reason, that chance, intimate, treating him like a deity. So I had a lot of prasad. So after Prabhupada left his body, any prasad I had, like, oh, cloth, or I gave it all away. And my godbrother, Jai Pataka Maharaj, I gave ah, him the ring. The, the ring that Prabhupada offered, and I took it. I gave it to Chakrata. But I did ask Prabhupada one day, I walked in, paid my obeisances, and I said, Srila Prabhupada, would you please allow me to have eternal service at your lotus feet? I don't know what, yeah. Prabhupada looked at me. All right. <laughs> so here I am. So what was your question? What did you think you were with Prabhupada when Prabhupada told the story how Krishna told him to come yes. to Syria? Yes. You want to hear that story? That's an eternal story. It was in Los Angeles, 1975. So, you want to hear the whole story? I just told this one in in, 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 in Vrindavan. Were you there? Anyway, it's always worth, worth retelling. So we're in Prabhupada's room in Watsika Avenue up, upstairs. He's in his darshan room. I'm sitting there. His asana is here in the big round pillows. Very nice up, up, up cloth with a big tassel on the end of, of the round pillow. And Prabhupada, 
he wanted to know how are things in Mayapur. He wanted a report. How is Jai Patak and Maharaj doing so and so? He wanted a report. Because I had just come from Mayapur. So I gave him a report. And Prabhupada was just. It was Upendra and me. Prabhupada was just. His head was against the pillow and he was playing with the tosser, you know, running it around his finger, the tossing. I often wonder, I often wonder, what is the difference between the Goswamis and me? They had their books. I have my books. He said, they had their light. 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 They had their light, whatever light they had, you know, candle. Or, he pointed at this little chandelier. He said, I have my light. He said, every night they can stay under a different tree. He said, every night I can stay in a different palace. I did not want to come here. No, you come down. Come down. Definitely said, you come down and write those books. And Prabhupada said, no, no. Imagine, Prabhupada is telling Krishna, no. I do not want to go there. It is a horrible place. It's a horrible place. Krishna said, no, no, you come down and write those books. I will take care of everything. You come down and write the books. Put his head back. It was very intense. First, all, only time I ever heard Prabhupada revealing that he is not from here, he is from there. And Krishna personally told him to come down, which means Krishna was here. And of course, Prabhupada said that his childhood deities, Radha Govinda, which are in the in the temple, Radhagovinda temple on Mahatma Gandhi Road in Cal North Calcutta. They're beautiful deities. That uh, they're his childhood because he, he was raised in the Moloch, big, like a palace, city palace, just across the street. And that was the Malik temple. That's, that's where Prabhupada had his first Thuvati Yatra that he... That's where, you know, the three, temp three altars that we have, you know, that's where that comes from. They have three... And the, de uh, the deities and every everything is still there if you ever have a chance. If you go at about seven o'clock in the morning, uh, the pujar usually the pujar is bathing and dressing the deities. That he puts them on a a gumsha on the floor in front of the... Yeah. But it's open. Yeah. 
you can go in and just sit down there. There's a, a, a gate, you know, that, but that's closed. But you just, you know, you're here, the dinner is there, it's dressing. No, that's very nice. So that Radha Govinda, Prabhupada said, they sent him to America. And when he had his first heart attack and he came back to India, he said, they called me back. So why was I telling you that? She asked you about it. That oh, yes, so I told you the story. But you see, there's a relationship. What that relationship is, I have no idea. I wouldn't dare to even speculate. But it was intimate enough for Prabhupada to tell Krishna no. <laughs> no, I don't want to go It's a horrible. Which also showed that in Goloka they're aware of us and the miserable lives and our stubbornness and our stubbornness to not go home. So, so many things can be understood from that simple story. Anything else? Any other questions? Thank you very much. You put us very deep in that time. Huh? Thank you very much. You brought us deep to that time when we wasn't born, but for proper time. Thank you. You calling me old? No, thank you for. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's before you were born. Yeah, it's so hard to understand that. It's difficult to understand. And uh, you see how expanding my poor and uh, uh, how you understand what is the secret of success of such a ex expansion. expansion. The secret to success in anything in Krishna consciousness is dedication and enthusiasm. Prabhupada said enthusiasm is the key. In the, oh, maybe two or three days before Prabhupada left the planet, he wanted to speak to Jaipataka Maharaj and me. So I was sitting on his bed <laughs> next to him, and Jagataka was sitting on the floor on the other side. And Prabhupada's concern was, are you all still enthusiastic to develop Maya? His concern was for us and for this project. So enthusiastic and dedicated uh, to the order of Srila Prabhupada. That is the key to success. Which brings me to another point. I've noticed over the years fewer and fewer devotees coming 
to the morning program. Which includes Mongol art and Darshan Radhamadhan and Prabhupada emphasized again and again the morning program. I remember one girl in Boston in 1969 she was sickly. She was always sick, always something. So she was sick. Prabhupada told her, yes, you're sick, but you get up, go to Mangalarti, and when that's finished, then you go back to bed. But I see now there's so many devotees here in Mayapur. Where are they? Where are where is everyone? I don't see a lot of Russian faces in <laughs> Nor do I see many of my god brothers or gods. We have to read have to follow the morning. We're building this temple to, for proper worship of Panchatattva and Radha Madhava. Are you all not going to come? Because of, oh, there's too many people. Oh, it's too noisy. Oh, I can't, uh, I can't chant because of all these people, all these people. Which is usually the excuse that everyone gives. So the fault in that kind of thinking is these are not ordinary people. These are devotees. All Indians are by nature pious and religious and religious and Bengalis especially Lord Chaitanya appeared and Prabhupada by this temple has revived the Krishna consciousness of the Indian people and you know because I've been trapped during Ras Purnima, I was trapped in the doorway, trying to get in the temple, and suddenly I'm trapped. <laughs> Surrounded by, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, Bengali women, they're not higher than my arm. So I can't move forward, can't move back, can't move this way, can't so on. But what are they all, where are they all? And their arms, are, they, they, want the, they want the blessings. They're here for the Ashirbhav sense. And you turn them this way and uh, okay, you know, wherever, wherever they can get it. And it's like something out of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. But the masses of the people that have heard Lord Chaitanya is out of Daika for this time. Trampled everything. They're all devotees. They're pushing. But remember, the old lady climbed up on Lord Chaitanya and jumped on the right? So that's how we should see all this. Because in the fifth temple, uh, Shivara Maharaj, uh, the other day I had lunch with him, he was telling me, at least 100,000 people a day are going to come. Does that mean you won't come? Does it? And at least for Guru Puja, and Prabhupada said there's only one deity 
Mayapur. In Mayapur, Radha Mayapur. You may have your own deities at home, that's all right. But they, Radha Madhava, take prime position. He said, all of you gather in the temple for the morning program. Then, when it's over, you go wherever you go and do your service. But you all gather first. All right, anything else? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, can you tell us what was that uh, something special in Srila Prabhupada which touched you and uh, for all life you will dedicate yourself to his service? For myself personally, I was always looking for some because I was born in New York City and you know, was a bit of a party boy. You know. But I was always looking for that like perfect person. Of course, for me, perfect person meant someone who's perfectly dressed. But when I first saw Prabhupada at the little temple on Vasyanga Boulevard in LA, uh, Prabhupada is coming, Prabhupada is coming. So I, I had joined the temple the week before. But I had had not Prabhupada was away, he had flown back. So this is the first time I'm getting to see So <coughs> everyone's outside on the sidewalk in this Dayananda, the president of he had a little Volkswagen boat. Little. Pulls up to the curb, and all, of course all these, you know, Vishnu, Jhana, and Tamar, and everyone's kind of I can't see The door opens. There he is. And everyone's saying their obedience. And Prabhupada had this thing around his shoulders, which we, of course, later, I later found out it was called the chatter. Prabhupada like takes it. He throws it around his shoulder. The first words. The Mughal Empire has The British Empire has fallen. Similarly, your American empire will also fall. Unless you become Krishna. Then he got down. I would say I can't you couldn't call it a Vyasa song. It was a, a little ladder that went up to a high seat. This, he was perched way up high on a, sta a little stage. It wasn't like a Vyasa song. Uh, and then he got down, got down off the stage, 
And in the, the, the main room, the temple room, which was not very big, but there were these big paintings, Vishnu, there was one of the Shringadev, <coughs> Prabhupada, uh, Vishnu John started chant, chanting Hare Krishna, playing this Madanga. And Prabhupada went to each painting, right like that, it turned around three times, and then he started dancing. We all jumping up and down, jumping. I didn't know why I was jumping, but everyone, I don't know, jumping. Then over here there was a small room, set up like, you know, like this. Prabhupada went in and we all crowded in. And uh, I sat there, right? As close as I could. In front of Prabhupada, Jamal Krishna, and a young Brahmachari named Gopal, Gopal something. He's now dead, he died in a automobile crash. So I'm sitting here and I'm watching this man. I'm thinking to myself, I've never seen anyone who looks like that. Even here in India, you've been in India, you've never seen anyone who looks like that. You never see anyone who looks like that. The features. No one. No one. Maybe his sister, Pishima. She resembled Prabhupada. So then, Prabhupada takes this thing, which of course I know now, as a lota. I don't grass, I didn't know it was a thousand years old grass. And he takes a drink, he pours it, the water comes over, who drinks water like that? Who drinks water? I mean, well, you, you were raised, don't you drink water? Right into his mouth, not a drop was spilled. And then he's giving out prasad. So he gives, he gives uh, to Mount Krishna Rasgula. And he gives Gopal a Rasgula. Gopal immediately Gopal but tomorrow he's keeping this. And I saw Gopal, he reaches over and takes Tamal's Rasgula and he eats it. <laughs> and he's just sitting there. So angry, he would get so angry. Boom, like that, Tamal would get fired. Prabhupada. Gopal just stole my Rasgula. Prabhupada smiled and said, he said, transcendental theft. <laughs> so, what attracted me is what attracted everyone else. So we did no. What attracted us? I mean, so many, every devotee will give you a different the reason, the reason, the reason. But the real reason is he's connected to the supreme attractive. That's what it was. Though we didn't know it. Probably still don't really understand. But that's, that's what it is. It's a purity. It's a, a non-palpable something which made everyone attracted to him, even those who didn't become his devotees. People on planes, you know, or people who just in the course of 
даже не, не ученики, в самолете кто-то кто увидел и так далее. Years later, devotees would have experiences. Oh yes, you're, you're Swamiji. I met him on a plane. Jeez, he was. И даже с годами преданные встречали людей, которые говорили, о, это ваш Swamiji, я его встречал в самолете, они были очень. So that's what it was. Purity. Чистота. Чистота это сила. Yeah. Anything else before I go? Yes, Matiji. They were stolen. They were on the old Pishi And when she moved here, she gave them to us, and they were on the altar. And Dakoids attacked uh, one night, and they stole those deities, because they thought everything was gold. They stole those deities, and they stole Radharani. And Radharani we found, but those deities we never found. So they backwards. Uh, you know what a dacoid is? Like the dacoids attacked on Arjun when he was escorting them. So where those deities are, I presume they've gone back to home. But here's an interesting story about those deeds. Grihasta couples take them. When Vishima uh, got married, Prabhupada, of course, was a Grihasta. So after the marriage, her husband became a bit of a rogue. A rogue, you know, just a, he didn't treat her nicely. And he wanted her to cook fish. So she went to Prabhupada and said, whatever his name was, I had no idea. Uh, is this, is that, he's not treating me nicely, what should I do? The Prabhupada said, remember the devotees that we had when we were children. She had them. He said, yes. He said, take them out of wherever they are and you start to worship them. Which she did. And she never complained to her husband. She just worshipped her deities daily. And eventually, her husband came to worship her. By the strength of her purity and her devotion to her deities, he was transformed. The husband was transformed. So you watch out if your wife starts to worship deities, then you're in trouble. Anything else? Uh, uh, yeah, also a second question about Mayapur Chandra. Do you know the story? Is Mayapur Chandra deity? Yes. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Prabhupada wanted to do here was for the devotees from the West to learn Dalmik. Because Krishnagar in this area is famous for dogs. 
So, uh, <coughs> uh, Bharadraj and his wife Rukmini, and a few, uh, I think, two other women. Srimati. Before I began, <laughs> funny story. I'll, I'll get back to this. But Srimati, uh, in New York, when I lived in New York, and I New York, of course you have a group of friends. And we used to go to a restaurant called Cedars of Lebanon. <laughs> Cedar is a tree. Of Lebanon. A Mid-Eastern. Because they serve hummus and all kinds of, you know, that meat, all kinds of vegetarian food. Because we had all become vegetarians in 1967, before I came to And, but we, uh, I hate to say this in front of him, but he understands. We need hummus and that great bread, that hot, you know, nice bread, hot bread, and all these things. And drink uso, which is a very strong Greek Lebanese wine. And our waitress was Srimati, so that whatever her name was then. So years later, two years later, I walk into the La Cienega uh, temple for a Sunday feast, and they're sitting in a corner making dolls, puppets, hand puppets. I said, what are you doing? She said, no, what are you doing? Amazing. Anyway, uh, so the first teacher, young guy, Milan, uh, he just died recently. He, he made, he's made dioramas all over this town, in India. So he was teaching Bharadraj and Srimati, but he made this deity to show, Prabhupada said, put it on the altar. Well, it wasn't an altar, it was just a little shed up in the front. And so we had the Rana Madhava, and some time later, Janani Vas was the Pujari. I noticed there were some cracks in the ankles. It was cracking. So I told Prabhupada, Prabhupada, the ankles are cracking on should we put him in the Ganges? Because I didn't like cracks, I didn't like, I didn't like anything that wasn't perfect. Like when I, we were walking one day, and Prabhupada stopped in front of the straw house. And I said, Prabhupada, should we tear it down? I was eager to tear it down, because we had this. So you know the straw house in the front. So Prabhupada is facing it. can we tear it down? No. Let them see. And he took his cane. This is what 
they were leading us. And this, pointing right to where the temple is today, is what they have become. So anyway, I told Prabhupada, should we put him in the Ganges? Prabhupada said, don't put him in the Ganges. And that was yeah, a long time, maybe 73. So he's been here ever since. That one in, inside. He's very beautiful. From what he made from Gangamat? Clay. I know if it's from the Ganges, but it's clay. All right? And that's it. So Prabhu uh, curious about that story uh, the, about Dark Coits. Uh, uh, and uh, did you discuss after with Srila Prabhupada of uh, what happened? It's to be expected. We're in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of the, the jungle or the rice fields. We're Westerners, so that equates at that time with these people wealth. And the deities, oh, they must be gold. So, and we're wide open to attack. We were attacked a few times. Which is why I brought Lord We haven't been bothered since. Since. Since Lord Nishringadev. You know, they come in the night. We had a little security, but nothing. And because everyone's barefoot, they throw glass and everything on the on the floor, so you couldn't, you know, you couldn't be. They took you in, in a jail? Oh, that was a, no, that, I don't, not today. Maybe tomorrow. That's another story. That's a good story. All right? It's not a question, just I just wanted to say thank you so much because two days ago I was in my room and I was watching the video uh, Prabhupada Memories exactly with you and you were talking about Prabhupada and I thought I wish I could just hear it from you directly and here I am two days later sitting with you here in Prabhupada's room. Thank you so much. She has the secret enthusiasm. <laughs> Where did you get your accent from? I don't know. I it's just an American accent. Yeah, Some an American I'm taught you English. Well, I'm a secretary to Mahatma Prabhu. Who? I'm a secretary to Mahatma Prabhu. Yes, maybe. Yeah, your good brother. Yes, maybe that's where Is I got Mahatma it. Mahatma here? No, he's coming in February. And where does he stay? Uh, right now he stays, um, he lives in Alachua in Florida, but now he's traveling in the USA. Yes, Mahatma. <laughs> Maybe he taught me. <laughs> By association, yes. you become Americanized. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing these days. <laughs> I'm so happy. Thank you so much. All right? Can you continue? Can we have this? No, no, no. No, you said another story. Maybe you have more stories? Not now, not now. I knew when I said that. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Maybe, I can't guarantee, but maybe tomorrow morning. 
10 o'clock. Oh, no, I can't because I 10 o'clock I have to talk to someone about the early days in Calcutta. This is also interesting. Yeah, but I... Can we come? Maybe we'll do it here. He's just some guy with a tape recorder and then... Uh, so you, yeah, you all can go. Yeah, why not? It's for Asian. Flower pots. September. September.